Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I'm going to be working with Prismacolor pencils today to color some flowers. It's a stamp set that I was given by Altenew recently, and it's so beautiful. It has lots and lots of flowers of different angles, different sizes. And I wanted to make a simple and elegant card, but with colored pencils. You can use a small set of pencils. These are the ones that I used in this and not have to invest in a whole bunch of pencils. Although I know a bunch of you recently bought the full set of Prismacolors. Congratulations for those who got that over on uh, the web during the Christmas season, because I know that went on a deep, deep, deep discount. So here is a pencil video for you. I'm not gonna show you like every flower and coloring every bit of it, but I'm gonna show you the process for one petal because that's the same process I'm gonna follow for all of the rest of the petals. And that is to put down this light purple first, and I'm going with really light touch. I'm trying to just get a coat of that down. Around the edge, I'm gonna add this more reddish purple and all the colors will be, of course, linked over on the blog. So if you wanna see exactly which colors I used. And I'm doing that just on the edge of each petal. Anywhere there might be a shadow as well. If there's a, a petal that curls, I'll put a little extra purple under there and letting that fade out into that medium purple or that lighter purple in the center of each petal and then the inside is going to be blue coming out over top of this purple layer. So you don't want the, this to build up and get waxy because as soon as anything gets waxy, you're losing your ability to do some soft blending. If you end up with like one single harsh line or something that you need to recover from, I try to color around that harsh line if I can, because usually it'll leave a, dark sp a light space on one side or the other of that dark spot. But you can also take a little knife and just flick off part of that and try to not damage the surface of your paper. Be real careful. You can also try using a kneaded eraser and try to see if you can lift off some of that at all because sometimes that will, will be helpful. So next, um, switching to these blues. And you can see that I'm just layering it lightly over top and then I'm taking this darker tealish blue in the center. So I'm going to let it get darker as it gets toward the middle of the flower. You can reverse the colorway. Absolutely. And each of those petals that has a little flip to it, those are the blue with the teal green. So it's just those two colors. And I'm just keeping those colors across the whole card because I want it all to just feel very calm and unified and yet really pretty. So you can see I'm just going over it in a couple layers, really light touches, and I'm not doing all one direction or anything. I'm kind of going round and round to get this smooth look. The centers of the flowers, I'm just gonna make the light purple with a little darker purple around the middle, that reddish darker purple. And then in the very center, I'll put a little bit of the teal just to add a little pop of contrast in there. So then I wanna darken around that center area just because I'm gonna be using a white pen and I want the white pen to have some real contrast behind it. So you need to have enough color in there that the white will show up. So if you have a flower that's going to be yellow or a light pink or something on the inside, it's going to be hard for that white pen to show up. So you might want to use a silver Signo or a gold Signo. Um, this is the white Signo pen that I'm using. And if Signo pens don't work for you, then use some other gel pen to add the details. I know that there's, I've never figured out the reason why, but for some people, the Signo pens work great. For other people, they like other brands. This is just the one that I like. And uh, yeah, so that's the thing. I'm just going over top of each one of these little dots. I'm adding even a few more because that's gonna add a lacy detail onto each one of the flowers that may or may not exist already, but it's gonna make it prettier as I add just a little bit more of the dots. And I'll finish all of the flowers in this very same fashion. Now I have a bunch of leaves that are stamped onto the card base. And this is all on Nina cardstock, by the way. So I tend to use that quite a bit for one simple reason is that I have a lot of Nina around all the time. I always have some cut and ready to go. So it's a real easy one for me to just grab. But you can also use bristles and all sorts of other papers too. You just don't want anything slick. So now I have taken a green and covered the whole leaf with green and I'm using the teal blue color for the shadows. And I'm saying teal blue. I don't know exactly what the name of that color is, but I will have that for you over on the blog. But it's the blue greenish sort of dark color. So rather than using a green, I'm using a color that was in the flowers that are gonna go on top of this. And that's gonna tie the leaves 
together with the flowers and the whole colorway on the whole card is going to match. And I actually chose this because of this ink that I have stamped my thank you in. And it's a W plus nine ink and it is called Falling for Blue. And even though it's a blue ink, it feels a little teal to me, like it's got a little bit of teal to it. So that's why I chose a blue pencil and a blue green pencil. So it's going to help to tie these colors to the colors that I've already stamped the sentiment in. So I'm adding a little shadow underneath of that flipped turned part of the leaf. And you may notice on the flowers, the flipped parts all have lines and on the leaves, the flipped parts are all solid and the rest of the, the leaf has the lines in it. So it's an interesting way for them to design the stamps so that they both have the same kind of feel to them, but you can definitely get a different feel for the leaf texture because it has all the lines across the whole thing, whereas the flower just the flowers just had them in the parts that are turned up. So I finished coloring all of the flowers and all of the leaves, and then I just had to sit and fussy cut my flowers. And that was just done with a pair of scissors, and then I started laying them out on top of the leaves to see what kind of an arrangement. I wanted something cascading at an angle down the card, and I have some adhesive on the back of them that's, uh, of course, not sticky yet because these are power tabs, my, one of my favorite adhesives. They're super sticky and they're a little thinner than the foam tape. I do like them quite a bit. And then I'll just start to place them now that I sort of have my general layout and stuck them all down. How pretty is that? Isn't that gorgeous? I love how the colors all match together because I use the same ones or that same teal green on the leaf that I used on the flowers. It just makes everything feel like it belongs together. And it's just such a pretty stamp set. So hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. You can also subscribe if you haven't yet because I put out about three videos a week and would love to share more with you. And on screen, I have a couple of other pencil videos. So if you are a pencil aficionado and would like to see some more pencil work, you can watch any of those. You can click to the blog and get lots more information. You can find pinnable pictures so you can save the idea for when you get the stamp set. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.